Please look at Roman numeral six. That is not just part of the Shahnama production that I have just uh, placed on um, the Roman numeral yeah, yeah, five, but rather on six, you find the Middle Persian version of it, a little text called the Minya Karat, which, if you allow me, I would read. Since from the pure luminous religion, it is revealed that the foundation of the malevolence of the Romans and also the Turks towards the Iranians was that vengeance which they sowed by killing Iraq and that till the renovation, that is the end of the world, it will continue. Okay? So, that is the worldview of the Iran Sharat, the Iranians, I think, believing a different worldview. Now, uh, as I mentioned, I think this worldview is not only a uh, Zoroastrian affair, but uh, that others in this religious community have also adopted it. I would just give you the most, the best example I know of is a is an inscription from a uh, sarcophagus found in Byzantium in the ninth century, I believe. I think most people have dated it to ninth century, where a Christian uh, Persian went to study uh, religion, and he died there. And what he has on his inscription is Roman numeral seven. As money Iran Shah, as Rustage Chalagon, as Dehefisht. From the dwelling of Iran Shah, does the Iran Shah survive that this ninth century Christian should mention where he's coming from? I thought the Arab Muslims came and they put an end to the Sasanian Empire and with it this idea of the I think this goes exactly on that. The idea of adoption and co-option of religious communities besides our astronauts also makes sense when we look at the Talmudic text. Again, Yaakov Elman is so important for what he's doing because of this, although Yaakov Musner had early on uh, given some thoughts to this, where, for example, Palestinian Jews accuse uh, the Jews in Babylonia under the Sasanians as wearing these strange caps, which they call uh, hats, Persian hats, and belts. They've gone completely crazy. Well, if you know about Sasanian history, uh, you know that the symbol of rank in Sasanian uh, uh, tradition is kolaf and kama, the hat and the belt. These people are co-opted, they are part of this world, they are interacting. Uh, while Musner was suggesting that there was not much interaction, Yaakov Edman is clearly <coughs> showing that there's much more interaction than marriage going on, and there's some very nice as well. So that is, uh, I would say, an idea that survived via the Zoroastrian tradition, via the Sasanian tradition, okay? And it went further than uh, uh, the 7th century. Now, um, if you think that I am one of these nationalist Iranians, which probably I am someone that would be better as time has gone by, that thinking that from Oxford to Euphrates is this Iranian world, okay, let me just point out to my other colleague, not our, my friend, who lived in the 10th century, uh, who wrote the Sean Amheam, my study, at least we have the Mohaddame or the introduction. Where in the Mohaddame, Shah Nami Abu Mansuri, Roman numeral 8, uh, in the section says, that Iran Shah has Rudo Omni as to Rudo Shadok. Iran Shah is from Oxus River to Euphrates. So I am not just saying this because, uh, you know, I am a Harvard nationalist. There is evidence, there is here and there evidence that suggests there's a cultural idea uh, available. Why the Sasanians haven't gotten their fair share until quite recently? Uh, why haven't they been studied? And uh, that is uh, mainly, at least uh, in certain quarters, is the, uh, because the, the negative, I think, bias that uh, European scholars have had on late antiquity, at least in the 19th and early 20th century, where late antiquity, thanks to my brother Claudia Rapp, the Romans have reminded me, was not involved. It's Christian uh, in general when they study late antiquity, and that is not what 18th, 19th century scholars like to study. Of course, it was classical Greece and Rome, which was, of course, the brilliance of the quote unquote Western civilization. Uh, and I would say, when it came to the Sasanians, European tradition is no better. Uh, Roman numeral 9a, I think I am giving examples of uh, Rawlinson who wrote the first book, as far as I know, on the Sasanian Empire, the seventh great oriental monarchy in the 19th century. Uh, you could read that it is not very complementary to them. Uh, page 276, at worst, should it be thought that the Byzantine influence appears so plainly in the later Sasanian works that Rome, rather than Persia, must be credited with buildings and sculptures. 
and goes on. It's just not buildings and monuments. Everything is just a credit of either the Byzantines or these people are just living. So that really doesn't you know, give us much uh, a reason to study these uh, people who didn't do much. If you were raised in Iran, uh, as some of you may have, uh, the way that we learned our ancient history, uh, certainly I think in the 60s and 70s, by reading uh, the translations of Soviet scholars, with all due respect, whose primary attention was to class conflict and religious abuse. And so there was a sense of religious, uh, the Islamic conquest was somehow justified as uh, an, a thing that was coming to the society, and they should have fallen. Uh, all I would uh, point you to is uh, uh, Kolesnikov, uh, Petrushevsky, Koleshenko, if you were raised there, you all would have read these texts. And in fact, in the 1960s and 70s, Iranian society and their view of the society was very much colored by these people, especially if they were part of the Munaf Battle of Fedra or the Roshan Fedra or the uh, intellectuals. That's where you went to. And of course, the Islamists didn't do much better either. First of all, the Pahlavi dynasty was, of course, popping the ancient Iranian world and connecting it to itself. But secondly, uh, they were, of course, pre not quote unquote pre Islamic civilization. And so with Islam comes the idea of brotherhood and uh, versus Zoroastrianism, according to these Islamist view of, uh, of what was going on. So people like Jalal al Ahmad, uh, I haven't even mentioned Qal Zadidi, but here in the service and betrayal of intellectuals, he mentions at the end of the Sasanian period, religion had become corrupt and was a noose around the masses. Ali Shariati, another important person who really had an impact on the Iranian youth and intellectuals, and others uh, made it seem like that this Sasanian empire is uh, an empire that should fall, should be destroyed. There is nothing good in it. And so I think Sasanians have gotten a very bad treatment. And then just more, rather than looking at the sources, we've been reading history through, again, these Soviet scholars, through Islamist scholars at these in the quarters uh, of this world. Now, I think another reason in the West uh, that this Iran Shah as a civilizational unit hasn't worked or hasn't perhaps been given due attention is the bias that we have in certain quarters. And I'm not talking about Mr. Kennedy or you know, Michael Warren, who are actually uh, very different from this. But I would like to invoke uh, the, uh, the sayings or the words of Marshall G. Hodgson, who I think is one of the greatest people who wrote on Islamic history or Middle Eastern history, where in the 60s, he was already saying, present-day Islamic studies still suffers from the philologism of their past, their Arabistic bias, with the neglect of the more central Islamic areas, is only gradually being overcome. I would suggest after 50 years, it is only gradually being overcome. Okay? I think it's becoming better than what I just mentioned at the beginning but it is only gradually being overcome. Lastly, uh, I would say if we take that into consideration, in the 10th century, uh, the center of this Islamic world, if you want to call it, is not Cairo. It is not D Damascus. But rather, uh, let's say, uh, Mesopotamia. This is part of this Iranian world. And I would say content, uh, as what uh, Richard Bullitt has also mentioned in this book, View from the Edge, meaning Khorasan. Khorasan is one of the centers. It is not the edge <coughs> of this important Islamic world. It is actually a center. We should actually focus a little bit uh, more to the east rather than the west. Now, the use of sources or the availability of the sources and other matters has caused some of these uh, I think issues which are being amended, uh, but that is uh, the problem I think that we have. Or the idea that I always think and I tell uh, for the, the provincializing Europe, Chakrabarti's book. Uh, well, I don't know, but I think we should be provincializing some other quarters as a, at the cost of another uh, when we're doing uh, pre modern Middle East history. Uh, all, also, I think some of the terminologies used. Uh, in the West has also created uh, this division and problem in studying Iran Shah, and that is, for example, the idea of Iran, uh, Silk Road. 
which Mr. Reza Khani or Dr. Reza Khani just wrote an article that wrote that there never was. And so we like to create these nice uh, sort of contrapos and people nicely getting on their camels, going and trading with each other. Uh, you know, from China uh, through the Mediterranean. But rather, the trade is very different at Khorasan, and Eastern Iran is very important in this greater Khorasan world. Uh, or the idea of a Central Asia, which really, I think, um, amputates this world of Iran Shah in the period that I'm talking about, which again, it's the creation of uh, European uh, uh, historiography. I think it's Alexander von Humboldt who comes up with this idea of a Central Asia, which I still don't know what it is to a large extent, and I think it hasn't really developed as a, a, a solid field. There are very few jobs in Central Asian states. I think all of this can work within this Iran Shah, and I'm not saying Iran as a nation state that we think of today. This is one of the problems. I think uh, Iran Shah is a cluster of modern nation states, who culturally in the pre-modern period, okay, uh, is has some sense of unity and could there could be fields and openings in the field of Iran Shah, and also as we have some in the Arab world and the Turkic world. And in this way, I think we can also remedy um, uh, the future of the United States. Thank you very much.